uh, Ronald Reagan when he popularized that term. And trust but verify has become my messaging theme as I travel around the country, talk to folks like you to try to prevent people from becoming a fraudster's next victim. Uh, trust but verify, so what does it mean? Uh, I talk about it extensively in the book, but I'm going to give you the four-minute back-of-the-napkin approach today. It used to be there was a time when your word was your bond. Well, today, a lot of people don't think that way. And let me tell you what a group of eighth graders told my wife in her U.S. history class a number of years ago. They said, you know, Mrs. Golden, if we have an opportunity to improve our grade by cheating, we're going to take it. Because if we don't, someone else will and then they'll win and we'll lose. And we don't want to lose. You have to defend against the notion that you can figure out someone's integrity and character just by your own interactions with that person. When I would start an investigation, let's say this is a situation where we don't know who is the bad actor, I'll sit down with a officer of the company, we'll pull out the organizational chart, and I'll start looking for suspects, and I may say, uh, here, this accounting manager here, Kathy, tell me about her. And he might say, oh, well, Kathy, she's, she's one of our most loyal and trusted employees, Tom. Um, you know, I, I really wouldn't uh, suspect her. And then he'd go on, and he'd say, you know, I hired Kathy. Uh, she's the kind of person that will get the job done no matter what it takes. She'll come in early, work late. Everybody loves working with Kathy. Now, the whole time he's saying these wonderful things about Kathy, he thinks that she's coming off of my radar screen when, in fact, she's moving up on my radar screen. Why? Because I think all good people are crooks? No. It's because my experience has shown me that most white-collar criminals exhibit those same characteristics that he's attributing to Kathy. So what do you do? You adopt a trust but verify philosophy for yourself, for your organization, and you live by it. You need to change the way you view trust. You need to do it now, and you need to do it on a permanent basis. When I was at PwC, from time to time, I would uh, offer seminars to our own auditors, hopefully to improve their own professional skepticism. One of them asked me a really good question one time. He said, Tom, are you telling us not to trust our clients? I said, of course not. I mean, if we didn't trust our clients, they wouldn't be our clients for very long, would they? No, what I am saying is that if you go out there and you trust before you verify, if you violate those auditing standards, that's an example of someone who is not doing his or her job. It is really that simple. <laughs>